Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss two major things. One, we're going to look at and identify the major bony features of both the tibia and the fibula. And then second, we're going to look at determining how you know if the tibia is the left or the right tibia. So first of all, these are two bones that occupy the distal part of the leg, so distal to the knee. The proximal part of the leg was, of course, the femur, and now the tibia and fibula are distal to that. All right. Now, when you're looking at these bones in either of the legs, the tibia is always the medial bone, and the fibula is the lateral bone. So just keep that in mind, and if you see these two bones together, that can also give you a clue as to which one's the left and which one's the right. First, we will look at the tibia. And if we look at the proximal part of the tibia, we'll see two bony prominences at the top. On the medial side, we of course have the medial condyle, and then on the lateral side, we have the lateral condyle. If we actually look on top of those, you can see it slightly from the posterior view, but if you actually get the model in your lab and look at it from the top, a superior view, you'll be able to see it better. There's articular surfaces on each of these that correspond with regions on the femur. So this little groove right here is the articular surface of the medial condyle, right on top of the tibial medial condyle. And this surface right here is an articulating point for the medial condyle of the femur. In fact, the medial condyle of the femur will actually sit right here in this articular surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. And the same thing goes for the lateral condyle. If we look at the posterior view of the tibia, this articular surface of the lateral condyle will be a surface into which the lateral condyle of the femur sits. Okay, And that is part of what constitutes the knee joint. Right? So that's very important to understand. Also on the tibia, if we look at the anterior view, and this is something we can only see on the anterior side, we have the tibial tuberosity. Okay? So the tibial tuberosity is right here. This is actually going to serve as the origin of the tibialis anterior muscle, but it's going to be a fairly large bony prominence on the anterior surface of the proximal tibia. Also, if we start at the base of the tibial tuberosity and work downwards with our finger in the lab on the model, we'll actually feel this crest that sort of sticks up, a thin bony prominence that goes down most of the length of the shaft of the bone. This is called the anterior border, and you may also see this anterior crest or anterior margin. Either one of those will work. I will normally refer to it as the anterior crest. And this anterior crest is something that you can only feel or see on the anterior surface. And so that gives us two things that will ultimately help us determine left and right in a few minutes. We can see the tibial tuberosity and the anterior crest on the anterior surface of the tibia. All right. Now let's look at the fibula, which is always the lateral bone of these two. So with the fibula, there's not much to it. Um, it's a very thin bone, but the side that is proximal in the body, right here, this is going to be the head of the fibula. Now, if we go down to the bottom, we have something that is analogous on the tibia and fibula to the styloid processes that we saw when we looked at the radius and the ulna. If we looked at the distal parts of the radius and the distal part of the ulna, we saw these styloid processes. They're called something different in the tibia and fibula, and they're slightly different. In the tibia, it's called the medial malleolus. Okay? So this little bony prominence that sticks down is called the medial malleolus, and in the fibula, it's called the lateral malleolus. This makes sense because the tibia is the medial bone, so this would have to be the medial malleolus, whereas the fibula is the lateral bone, so this has to be the lateral malleolus and their analogous structures to the styloid process, as I mentioned a minute ago. Also, between these bones, in the same way that we had an interosseous membrane between the radius and the ulna, we also have an interosseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula. And it's really just a fibrous network, a membrane that connects the two bones and adds some increased rigidity and structure and so forth. Helps them from falling apart, basically. 
all right? But this is called the interosseous membrane. And just like in the case of the radius and ulna, you can only see this if the bones are together. If they're separate, just models you can take apart, you won't see the inter interosseous membrane, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's take a look at how we determine whether or not we've got a right or left tibia. Now keep in mind what I said. The tibial tuberosity, but really the anterior crest is the better thing to look at. Uh, these have to be on the anterior surface of the tibia, okay? Also keep in mind that this medial malleolus has to be on the medial side, toward the midline of the body. So if you recognize that you've got an anterior border or an anterior crest, whatever you're calling it, that's the anterior surface of the tibia. And so if your medial malleolus is on this side, that has to point toward the midline of the body. So it's anterior, we're looking at the patient uh, directly, so this actually has to be the right tibia, okay? This has to be the right tibia, and we can see that in this picture. If this were flipped and we were looking at the anterior surface but the medial malleolus was on the left side in the picture, well then that would have to be the left tibia, and that's because the medial malleolus is always going to be on the midline side of the body, closest to the pelvis. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the tibia and the fibula right now. Hopefully this video helped you and gave you a good understanding of the bony features of each. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.